Hey everyone, this is Lynn Hamilton here, and I'm uh, sitting today with my friend Kim Rain, who is a, um, a prophetess. Um, we're going to be discussing a dream that Kim had, which um, has me in it, which is why, why I'm in the mix today. Um, we're going to discuss um, a dream she had a couple of years ago and look at what do we do with dreams, what are we supposed to do with dreams, um, and just how to manage that whole realm. Um, so I'm going to just have Kim, first of all, read the dream. So if you can really try and pay attention to what she's saying, then we'll come back and uh, pick it apart and see what's going on with it. So, Kimmy. Thank you. Here we go. The 16th of January, 2018. Um, my dream. I found myself sitting in a room, a conference-type room. I was at a table with about six, maybe more, not less people. There was a gathering of people behind us who had come to watch. It seemed from what I could work out that two men from America had called together the best prophets to bring a word over Australia in general and the church. It was like some sort of competition and the winner being exalted by these Americans. My leader, Apostle Lynn Hamilton, was standing with these men just watching. And so it began. One by one, these prophets brought their prophetic words, passing around the microphone. I remember feeling so overwhelmed. I had no idea why I was at the table. I kept thinking, why am I here? I can't do this. One of the American men leaned over to Lynn and asked her quite sarcastically, what's wrong with Kim? I thought you said she was good. Why is she sitting there doing nothing? I heard this and saw the look of disdain on his face as he looked at me and my heart sank. But Lynn just folded her arms across her chest and with a chuckle she said, just wait for it. I tried to get the microphone but no one would give it to me. They passed it among each other. They seemed to know one another. They were all excited. And as they prophesied, I could hear people from the crown behind us yelling out amens and clapping at the good time, great future and plenty of finances for all type words coming from these people. When they finished each word, they were high-fiving and taking pictures of themselves, posting their, their words and were clearly excited about their own awesomeness. I was shocked and so sad and by their behaviour. I eventually got the microphone and I stood up, closed my eyes and with a great shout, three times I yelled out, good morning Vietnam. There's a war coming. We need to work at the hospital. We need to get everything ready for all the people coming. I was overwhelmed with urgency and my heart was breaking. I told them about the war and how so many people would become sick and come to hospital and we weren't ready for such a thing. I saw so much heartache and so many broken lives. I told them we needed to warn people to get ready and to be prepared, but to my dismay, when I looked around the room, people were just glaring at me. I sat down and began to sob. A prophet lady came over and said to another of these prophets, what's wrong with her? Why is she so negative What and why is she crying? The woman answered her and said, don't worry about her. She's always doing stuff like that. They both glared at me and then went back to their pictures and congratulating each other on their greatness as prophets and their awesome words. I just sat sobbing. I was absolutely gutted. I knew nobody heard the cry I had brought. Something devastating was coming and nobody cared. And, and I was sobbing also because of their behavior. It was wrong. It broke my heart. A friend from from my church, Leanne tried to console me, but nothing could. I woke up, and upon waking, I was sobbing still. I cried on and off for weeks, and at the advice of Apostle Lynn, I interceded for the prophets in Australia. Thank you. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's quite a dream. Yeah. yeah. And clearly um, a warning dream. Yeah. Um, which is one of the things I know that God does with you, yeah. the, the, the warning thing on you. Um, and so I want to ask, first of all, what, what do you, first of all, 
what what do you take from it? What were the thing the main things in the dream that impacted you? Well, first off, the fact that the other prophets who were obviously they knew each other, they were renowned. <laughs> um, the words they were bringing in my dream were absolute rubbish. Um, I don't know how else to put it. This is it's my dream that God gave yeah. me. It, it it wasn't true. Um, they were glorifying themselves, which broke my heart. Um, yeah, they just they were they were showing off. <laughs> they were showing off to the Americans, and yeah. they were showing off to the audience, and they were so self absorbed. Yeah, yeah, and and there was there was no substance to what they were saying, but it did make the people happy. Right. And the crowd was very pleased. When I prophesied in the dream, nobody spoke, nobody clapped, nobody cheered. Everybody <laughs> glared at me. Yeah. Like people were, it was like they were really angry at me. Yeah. I didn't make anyone happy at all. Yeah. Mostly people don't really like warnings. They prefer yeah. all the, the exciting stuff. Yeah. But let me just say up front that when it comes to interpreting dreams, yeah. The, the, the most important element in it is the witness of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So we're sitting here today discussing this, yeah. and you could talk to maybe half a dozen other people and they'd all have their spin on what happened. Yeah. But because it was your dream, mm -hmm. you're the main one who, you know, when anyone would try to comment on it, yeah. um, the Holy Spirit would witness to you mm -hmm. yes or no. And so it sounds to me like you were. One of your main concerns was that this was an event yeah. that had been organised um, and we've, you know, we've booked God to come and speak. <laughs> we've invited him to this event and we want him to, we're expecting him to speak. But your concern was that the people were, seemed to be in a wrong spirit. Yes. Towards the prophetic. Yes. And so I'm assuming that we'll probably jump around all over the, the thing, but um, it disturbed you. Like you, you, when you woke up from this dream, yeah. did you feel like you had been burdened with something by the Lord? Did you feel like you really Absolutely. burdened you? Absolutely, I was absolutely heartbroken. I woke, I was sobbing in the dream when I sat down yeah. and I woke up absolutely sobbing. I felt, can I use the word gutted? Yeah. Grieved, like I just, I couldn't believe what I dreamt and I didn't know what to do yeah. with what I dreamt and it would not leave me. Yeah. It would not go away and it didn't go away for a long time. That, yeah. That's why I sent you the dream and asked you what to do, yeah. what should I do, because I was crying yeah. and you told me to intercede, yeah. which I did for weeks and weeks on end and have done and and just for the people, the burdens never actually left me, the burden of probably won't. the true prophetic, yeah. the burden of, of how whether I'm bringing this or whether I'm bringing that, if it's a warning, Nobody wants to hear it. Yeah. They're, they're not interested. Yeah. Just and, and 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 prophets not bringing truth. Yeah. Truth. Yes. The one of the things that um is disturbing to me, and as you know, you you've been with me for I don't know twenty five years yeah. or something. Um, I've, and, and God placed me, He gave me a prophetic ministry because of my concern. The prophets weren't being heard, they weren't being trained and raised up and, and all that. Um, but so, uh, so I watch, I watch out for the prophetic ministry and I, I, I have a concern and it's, it's easy. Um, it's a very exciting, it can be a very exciting ministry. Yeah. It can add a lot of glamour to the church, you know, and excitement because God's always, it's, he's gonna, he's gonna do this. It's, it's always future, you know, and, um, 
So a lot of the stuff is predictive and God's going to be this great revival and God's going to bring and going to prosper us and he's going <laughs> to, that really bothers me. Yeah. Um, because um, there's no burden in that. No. You know, it, it, it's, God's like some celestial Santa Claus that's got to perform to what we want him to do. And uh, it's very easy to be excited about something that hasn't happened yet. Yeah. So, so everybody loves to hear God's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, yeah. he's gonna, he's gonna do this, he's gonna do that. So everyone, yay, happy clapping. We're gonna, yeah. but it's not proven yet. Yeah. You know, uh, hang on a minute. Let's wait a few months. Yeah. You know, and see, because aren't we a bit, you know, uh, premature? In celebrating, I don't know the faith people will get mad at me for this, but mm. we can be presumptuous and premature in celebrating something that God has not done yet, just because maybe we'd like Him to do it. Yeah, and and this happens at the this does my head in. Like at the beginning of every year, the prophets come out of the woodwork, whether they're false prophets, true ones, whatever. Mm. And they're all predicting what God's going to do in 2020, what God's going to do in 2021. And, you know, there's this tremendous pressure put on the prophets to tell us what God's going to do. Well, what if God doesn't want to tell us what he's going to do? You know what I mean? Yeah. He, yeah. I, I had this, this issue recently with um, there, was a, there was a thing where um, with this COVID-19 thing, a lot of Prophets and well-known prophets were beating themselves up because they hadn't picked up that there was going to be this COVID nineteen, this plague, yep. this, this um, pandemic, and they were really beating themselves up. And several times I heard, like you know, Amos, Amos three, yep. seven quoted. Um, you know, but surely God does nothing yeah. without He first revealed His secret um, counsel to His the servants, the, the prophets. prophets. Um, well, that, and so they were all miffed because they missed it. Well, hang on a minute. Let's go back and look at that scripture. Mm -hmm. It's not talking. It's it's talking about what God's going to do. Yes, God guarantees mm -hmm. that He will tell the prophets mm -hmm. what He's going to do. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but he wasn't doing COVID-19. No. That wasn't him. No. So, you know, why was everybody getting all upset mm. about God didn't tell me, mm. you know, because I could go, you know, God didn't tell me. Well, he didn't have to because it wasn't him doing it. Yeah. It wasn't a punishment or no, it was, something it, for our sin or whatever no. they think. It was the it was the enemy of our yeah. souls who created this through yeah. corrupt Men, yes, and inflicted this plague, um, you know, and we were all blindsided by it. Um, but the one thing we do know, just in answer to why didn't God seem to tell the prophets, mm -hmm. we do know there's a devil, he's real, mm -hmm. he's mad as hell, right? He's a bad dude, yeah, <laughs> and he's gonna do, he's gonna do horrible things. That every day, I yes. mean, in every nation, yeah. as much as you can, that's already spelled out. Mm -hmm. It's right through the scriptures. It's mm -hmm. right through the book of Revelation. It's in Daniel. It's it's right through. We don't need to be specifically told that, yeah. because we we should expect him to to be bad, yeah, right. So, but but for us. We should be that the Bible says be diligent, be alert, be on watch. Yes, you know we should be. And if there's anything that the the prophets do get um, stirred up about, it's when the church gets lazy and isn't prepared mm. for things. And that's why you were saying in the dream yeah. you have this thing. Um, <laughs> we're not ready. <laughs> yeah. And I said to you, did you? Because it's two years old. Yes. Did you see that you do say that it's get we need to get the hospitals ready yeah. and that they're going to be full of sick people yeah. and that it's going to cause devastation? And so that sounds to me like God was alerting about the COVID 
yeah. 19. Is that how you saw it? Yeah, it is. I I didn't get the words COVID-19, but there was definitely something devastating coming yeah. that would physically, emotionally and financially devastate families. I saw that. And as a church, yeah. we weren't ready because we were being so glamorous yeah. and we were having a good time and we were just, I don't know, like like the prophecies that went out yeah. at the beginning of the word. It, 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 yeah. It's not even that we miss it. We weren't even doing what you just said in Scripture yeah. was being aware. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. We, were, we weren't aware. We, we, were caught we weren't off. ready at we all for caught anything. Off guard. Caught off guard because we're supposed to be prepared and be ready. Yeah. You know, we get up in the morning, okay, Lord, whatever happens today, <laughs> make me prepared and ready, make my heart right yeah. so that I can, can go through the day with you. Yeah. You know, we don't get up in the morning and say, God, we're going to have a great day, but it's going to go great because sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. And then we're not prepared. It, it, it the, that's what the dream was. The church wasn't prepared yeah. for something bad to happen. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's not a little baby. It doesn't need to be told every three minutes. Yeah. You know, this bad thing. So we're supposed to be prepared anyway. Exactly. Whether God lets us know or whether he doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> Expect the best. Yeah. Prepare for the worst. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, be strong in the Lord. Yeah. But there's several things in the dream that, would have concerned you, yeah. And obviously, did. And um, when it comes to, and I've got some thoughts on them, which is why we're doing this, yeah. Um, but it still has to witness with you, yeah, because that's the Holy Spirit witness. Um, the um, the fact that it was well, let, let me just say up front when we're interpreting, yes, yeah. people's dreams. Um, you know, I've taught like for many years on the prophetic ministry, which includes the whole dream realm. And um, when we're interpreting dreams, I I encourage people in the prophetic, well, which, like I said, includes the dream realm, to have their own um, bag of um, symbols and yeah. things that uh, mean particular things to them. I think it's this interpretation realm is really treacherous. Yeah. If you're not careful. So when you take your dream to somebody else to interpret. Yeah. Uh, now there are people who are extremely gifted in interpreting dreams. Um, and as in every area of ministry, there's some unscrupulous people as well. And, you know, it's fraught with peril, <laughs> the whole thing, but. We need to be careful. Like, for example, I, c I could recommend, um, say, John Paul Jackson yep. ministry. He's got some incredible teaching materials and what to do with dreams. Yep. And, and, there, and there's other people also. But I think um, when it comes to symbolism, I, I personally have my own symbols that when, if I'm prophesying or if I'm dreamt, if I see a particular thing, for example, to me, if I see the colour brown, mm -hmm. if people are all dressed in brown in my dreams or in a, a prophesying over somebody and they're all dressed in brown, brown to me is the colour of servanthood. Okay. So to yeah. me that means servanthood. Yeah. To somebody else it might mean something else. Yeah. But one of the things you have to be careful of is there are some prophetic dictionaries out there mm -hmm. that um, are very easy, sort of quick to go to, and you can yeah. have, you see a whale, you know, and you dream. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, go if, if if your first go to place yeah. is a dictionary, the prophetic dictionary. With all due respect to everyone who's made prophetic dictionaries, mm -hmm. um, that's great, but it, it's Dangerous. You need to wait on the Lord first mm. with your dream and go, what do you mean by that whale, Lord? Yeah. What does that mean? You know, um, and, 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 and only when you, you come up with nothing mm. 
then maybe go and have a look what that might say because I've noticed that some of them will say you'll have say well like whale and you'll have ten different meanings yeah and some of them conflict well which one is it yeah you know so you've got to be careful with the quick fix oh I'll just look in this book and see what that means you must wait on the Lord mm. and so um, because uh, I, I do believe that in the future dreams are going to increase and increase and yes. especially warning dreams and so um, we've got to be careful how we because they affect people's lives mm -hmm. and so you know um, if I see for example just with this symbolism for a minute if, if I see uh, say rain mm -hmm. scripturally there's several scriptures that talk about for example, you know, blessed is the ground that, you know, soaks up the rain that often falls on it because it's going to produce, you know, um, wherever that, somewhere in the New Testament, <laughs> that, that scripture is there about the ground being blessed if it, if it soaks in yep. the rain. So most people would say that rain denotes the Word of God, mm -hmm. right? And there's another scripture... Um, you know, again, that talks about um, uh, the washing of the water of the word. Yeah. So it would seem that to most people, rain would mean the word of God. Yes. And that would be line up with scripture and that would be great. Yeah. So, but for me, sometimes it's not always the word of God. Sometimes it means if I see like a rain drizzling down onto somebody, to me, that can mean uh, refreshing. Yeah. God's going to refresh you. So it's not always a one-size-fits-all interpretation, and that's where we need to be careful. And so that's probably all I'll say about that. But um, obviously stuff should not contradict what Scripture is saying. Mm -hmm. um, but we do need to have, you know, if I see a rainbow, it always... If I see a rainbow over somebody's head or a rainbow in a dream, it means God's going to fulfill a promise that he made. It always means that to me. Yeah. It's always the same thing. But to somebody else, it might be something else. So that's why we're discussing this, yeah. but it has to sit right with you. Yeah. So it, the, the what did you think about the... Um, first of all, it's an organised event. Yes. So I was joking before about yeah. we've booked God. God will yep. be here on Wednesday night at eight o'clock. Yes. <laughs> Start prophesying. Yeah. Um, so you said that it had been organised by the Americans. Yes, two Americans had come over. Right. Yeah. So was what do you think about that? Um, or do you wonder about it or what? Yeah, do you, yeah, what? I do. It, in my dream, how I felt yeah. when I'm sitting there watching. These, these men and, and the other prophets, it, it felt like some sort of competitive competition and right. we're all vying for these Americans to look at us and, and the prize would be, and, and this is honest, would be yeah. that they would exalt us. Maybe they'd take us back to America, you know, we'd have our name in flashing lights and we'd be on Sid Roth and yeah. we'd do all this sort of stuff. It would be a celebrity. It, it would be a celebrity or yeah. whatever. I mean, it, it, felt, it felt like that. The, everybody was so excited and... And with these men watching them and, yeah. and all this sort of thing, and it just it just wasn't right. It, and it bothered you. And it bothered me. Yeah. It bothered me. It was um, it was all about them and impressing them. Do you know what I mean? And and yeah. The fact that, see the fact that God showed you that in the dream and yeah. it bothered you means it bothers him. Yeah. So, but let me just say this about the Americans. Yeah. Um, see, the Americans have been trailblazers, you know, yeah. forever. And the, tr the Americans have been, ha historically, uh, in, the, in the ministry and in the church, they've been the greatest encouragers. I mean, they are and Americans. They've got the we can do it thing, yeah. you know. They're tremendous exhorters. And they've been coming over to Australia forever. Mm -hmm. um, or the last couple, you know, whatever, however long. Um, and they've been encouraging us and helping us and saying, come on, you can do it, come on, you can do it. Because we've been on the back foot because yeah. we don't believe in ourselves. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, 
I'm not quite like that because I'm British in my background, but uh, but I, I get it. The the Australian psyche. Uh, Australians are a bit slow to move. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't. They they do for the most part have had uh, way too much low self esteem. Yeah. And so if we're not careful, we we would just let the Americans do it. We let the Americans mm. take it. So where, why that bothers God now is that it's it's our turn. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean the Americans are finished, but the Americans have led the way. They've shown us mm. how. They've proved it. And we thank God for them, and they'll always be in the mix with us. Um, but this whole thing about we've tried to impress them, mm. because we need, this is a nation of Australia that needs so much affirmation. Mm. We shouldn't need that much anymore. Yeah. At some point, we've got to take God at his word and believe that we are who he says we are. Until then, we're going to look for the Americans' approval. Yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing in your dream that all the prophets that were at this table, mm -hmm. were they Australian? Yes. Right. So you've got the Aussie prophets trying yep. to impress the Americans. Yeah. The, <laughs> um, and you know, the Americans could take you home and make you a star. Yeah, yeah they, it felt they, like a competition. They oh, absolutely sort of, could. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you're, so these prophets were trying to bring positive words, yeah. faith-filled words, Exciting yes. words, crowd pleasing. Um, Everyone was clapping and amening. Yeah, um, you know, um, and you know what? I mean, God forgive me, but I'll, I'll say it anyway. Um, as you know, my background is show business. I've yeah. been in show business. There can be a lot of similarities in the ministry. Yeah, <laughs> to, <laughs> to show business. Yeah. if you if you get to a certain level of popularity, you can. You can have your circuit that you get on, yep. and you can earn quite a healthy living off the back of the church. Yeah. If you're unscrupulous. Yeah. Right. So that's that's a temptation. Yes. Um, now, the prophets are out of everyone. I'm not allowed to go there. Right. You can't be doing stuff for money or fame or glory or any of that. But it sounds like this scenario was an opportunity for people to show off. Yeah, it was. And, yeah. and you say, uh, uh, the, what's interesting is that you see, saw me mm. standing next to the Americans. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You only said one line in my whole movie. <laughs> one line. And I, was, I had no problem standing next to you. No, no, you, you and the Americans were standing together yeah. and you were watching the goings yeah. on and... Um, yeah. One of them actually went over to you yeah. and spoke to you about me. Yeah, so I recommended you. Uh, well, you must have. You were there and yeah. we know each other, so they obviously. Said, they said to me, Yeah. I, I, th I thought you said she was good. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I'm sitting there looking terrified which, and, and in disbelief. Yeah. yeah. Which means I've said, Here's my girl, Kimmy. Yeah, <laughs> she's awesome. <laughs> but but nobody will give you the mic. No, no, they weren't interested in it. Even the prophets, like, yeah, yeah. I was last to prophesy. But what I found interesting yeah. was, I think it says in your dream, you said, I tried to get them. Yes, mic. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so, I kept putting my hand down, yeah. and they would look at me and pass it to somebody else. But they you wouldn't tried. Give it to me. I did try. I <laughs> so they didn't, for whatever reason. Yeah. And, and that will probably because they don't know you. Yeah, well, they or seem they to know each other. Yeah. yeah. But they know they didn't know me. Yeah, before. so you, no. were, you weren't one, I was of nobody. The, one of the in the no, crowd. That's the least <laughs> in the kingdom. <laughs> so, but anyway, so, but you finally got it, didn't yes. you? Yes. And then you let out your thing about, look, this, yes. this is coming. Yeah. And um, did I already say to you, um, did, did you perceive this was? the COVID-19 thing. Yeah, I didn't hear the words COVID-19, but I knew but there's something so devastating was coming. People were going to get sick. Financially, emotionally, it was going to devastate people yeah. and that we weren't ready, whether it be spiritually or in a supportive role, yeah. that we weren't ready for any of it. Right. So it was all about preparation. I just kept saying we need to be prepared. Right. You know. So we needed to get ready to be the church. Yes. In an emergency. In emergency, that's what I'm saying. Yep. Okay. 
So therein is the warning. I yeah. mean, even if it's even if it like it's two years later now, yeah. and we're, we're still in lockdown yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, pretty much, but it's a warning for the future. Yeah. Um, the, the church needs to strengthen mm. and toughen up and and be ready to take her role. Yes. And uh, and stop just expecting all the you know the good. We need to get real about yes. we are in the end times. Yeah. And Satan is getting nasty. Mm-hmm. Like he's really getting. He's always been mm-hmm. nasty, but he's really pulling some things out of the bag now. Um, so we can't just be cheapening. We put it that way. Yeah. I think it cheapens the prophetic when all we do. See, the, when all we do is prophesy the goodies. Yeah. That that's not what the prophets are for. Mm. The a simple gift of prophecy would be encouraging, and yeah. you know, we we expect that. Um, but the role of a prophet, it's a heavy, it's it's a burden bearing thing. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it's not to be cheapened. I get upset. Get on my soapbox now. I, I I get upset when I see people using prophets mm. in the office of prophet, mm. which is a heavy office, yeah. just to prophesy. Yeah, other people, like individuals, yeah. yeah. The, the, all yeah. I can see in the prophet mm. is, will you prophesy personal prophecies over mm. everybody? You know, I don't want to do that anymore. I, I want to share with you mm. the burden of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know the burden of the Lord, because you you can have, you can have a word from the Lord, mm. which is a personal prophecy. Yeah, or you can carry the word of the Lord. Yeah, which is how God feels, mm. <laughs> in and in the bigger picture mm. of everything. Yeah, so, um, mm. I think that it's time for the prophets mm. to come into the and be appreciated for mm. the heavier thing that they carry. Yeah. And maybe maybe this COVID nineteen scare mm. has sobered everybody up a bit on that. Yeah. Because actually and I posed this question to somebody, a friend of mine recently, mm. that when it comes to the warning prophets, mm. um, they're not popular. No. And which minister or ministry or church or apostle mm. is going to open up their platform mm. and risk losing the you know the favor of their congregation yeah. to bring some prophet in who's mm. going to say you know we're all doomed <laughs> <laughs> not that we are doomed but yeah. to, to bring something heavy because um, people just. It's just not popular. Yeah. But anyway, um, I thank God that he brings dreams. Yes. Because dreams impact our emotions. Mm. And um, like somebody like me, I, I grew up not, not being led by my emotions. You know, it's that British thing, you mm. know, have a cup of tea, sweep everything under the carpet, you know, mm. never mind how you feel about things, carry mm. on. You know that sort of thing, but um, so I- emotions. I'm not. I don't listen to my emotions a lot. Yeah. So if I have a dream, and it affects and impacts my emotions, yeah, I absolutely know that that's God, and I take that thing seriously. Yeah, because uh, He's done that to me. Yeah, you know I can't shake it, and like you will not be able to shake yeah. this. Yeah, I still. I still yeah, have. and probably from now on, like every time you preach, or yes. you know, uh, your even the, even your preachers will take on a whole tone of get ready, yeah, <laughs> yeah, get ready, get ready, because you don't know what's going to hit. Yeah, well, I've never next. stopped saying there's a war coming. Yeah, something's coming. I've said that since I had the dream. Yeah, and yeah, it just it just is what it yeah. is. <laughs> just. Well, here's the thing. I mean, we are. <laughs> We are in a we are in a war. Yeah. Um, and we have been. Yeah. Um, it's just that the tactics are getting dirtier. Yeah. Now. Yeah. 
Um, and so um, I guess we're, I mean, we're talking about this today because we want, we want people to take seriously the fact that warning prophets um, are vital mm -hmm. to the church. Yeah, even in personal prophecy. Yeah. Like they get disregarded. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you try to adjust or, and, and you're, you're saying what God tells you to tell someone. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get happy, clappy prophecies. I, I, my heart is, okay, Lord, tell me what they need to do, yeah. what they need to fix to, for the next season so that yeah. they can grow and become everything they're supposed to be. And, and that's what he gives me. Yeah. And sometimes it's not received because yeah. I'm not saying, you know, when you grow up you'll be the apostle of the century. Yeah. You know, God's heart is getting us over the line yeah. and, and, and letting go of some stuff. But yeah. people don't want to hear it. Well, Even a small Jesus, sense. <laughs> Jesus being the ultimate prophet, yeah, you know, said to that, you know, rich young ruler, yeah, one thing you lack, mm. right? Go and sell all your possessions yep. and give it to the poor. Not that there was anything wrong with having possessions, but there was for him mm. because his whole identity was in it, and he was addicted to what he owned, and yeah. he was not, you know, they, his possessions had him rather than the other way around. So Jesus was saying, well, here's the thing that needs to be adjusted. Mm. So um, what, I, what I love about God is that God is honest with us. Yes. You know, if, yeah. if we've got an ear to hear, he is totally honest mm. with us. He never holds back. Mm. You know, he will warn us, he will alert us, he will tell us, look, this is going to cost you, or this might hurt you a bit, mm. but it's necessary. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I hope that, um, see, what can happen is when, when people like yourself yeah. get rejected or feel rejected mm -hmm. um, because of these words, yeah. <laughs> it will tend to make you shut up. It, it, it's the sit down and shut up we don't yeah. want to hear. Don't be so bold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got a big mouth and, yes. you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm sure there's people listening to this who haven't said a word for years because yep. it wasn't popular. Mm -hmm. And I just want to encourage those people, mm. get up and go again. Seriously, we need we, we need the warnings. Yes. I mean, I, I, I bring them myself. Mm. Um, and I know, I mean, I've... Doors have closed to me, to mm -hmm. me, because I've said I've brought an adjusting thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people don't want to hear that. Um, and so you've got to, you've got to risk, you know, the, the thing about being a, a, there are prophets of doom and there are prophets of grace, mm -hmm. <laughs> both of which are, are out of balance. Mm -hmm. But then there's a prophet of God. Yep. Yeah. And the prophet of God will say whatever God's saying, mm. whether it be encouraging or whether it be a bit, you know, sobering or yep. whatever. We have to say what God's saying. Mm. And so um, I, I feel your burden um, and I want to encourage you in it. And I don't know how far, you know, when we... The, the thing is... A prophet could come to a town mm. and preach to a, a, a church of, say, 30 people yep. and have a warning word for the region, yep. the region, right? And God would consider that that's been said. Mm -hmm. Now, there are, might only be 30 people at the meeting. Those 30 people are supposed to take it and run with it and mm. broadcast it to everybody else they know. See that God's not going to go to every church in that region with that same word. Yeah. You know, and keep doing it over and over. That's why when a prophet comes to town, people should come out and listen, mm. no matter which church that they're coming to. God considers it. I don't think it's ever about how many people we might see are mm. listening to us at any time. Um, the church has to get a, get a clue. 
Yeah. And realize that when the prophets speak, they need to be passing that on uh, yeah. outside, you know. Um, so let me just have a... What else did, were you concerned about out of this? Do you, is there anything else? Yeah, I, I think it's important to note why um, I didn't run around and broadcast the dream with a trumpet. Yeah. Um, um, I think that's important to note. And the fact is that I did. I came to you the yeah. next morning. I rang you or I texted you. I, I took a, a quick copy of the dream. I sent it to you in a photo. Um, and I spoke to you and asked you, what do I do with this? Because my heart was breaking yeah. and I couldn't stop crying. So yeah. that part, even though I've had those dreams about myself before where God's given me warnings about myself and other people, but this this was a whole new level for me. So I did. I felt I did the right thing. Yeah. I yeah. came to you, you were my leader did. at the time, yeah. and you said intercede which I did with yeah. tears yeah. and I got angry. <laughs> there yeah. was some anger and, and frustration um, and I didn't understand all of it, no, yeah. but I knew something was coming. I didn't know yeah. when, no, I didn't know why. It's God's choice when he releases something and when he doesn't. Now, the Lord himself told me to do this today, so that's why we're bringing this today and yeah. I still... I came to you and discussed it with you yeah. so that you could go to the Lord um, and, and I would know that yeah. I was, you know, I, I was doing the right thing. Yeah. So it's very important to be covered in what you do, not just releasing things everywhere because you think yeah. you've nailed stuff or putting yeah. them on YouTube, trumpeting, stuff you don't even understand, Yeah. you know. The thing is with the prophet that you're, you're the mailman, mm. so you've got, You've got mail mm. from God. Your job is to deliver it, mm. and then you just got to leave it there. Yeah. So you did your job. Yeah, I interceded. But look at this. <laughs> this is interesting to me. Yeah. <laughs> I've just seen revelation <laughs> come. <up. laughs> I've just seen. Um, you say you saw so much heartache and so many broken lives. Yeah. Which is what's happening now. Yeah. Told them we needed to warn people to get ready and to be prepared. But to my dismay, when I looked around the room, people were just glaring at me. Yeah. Because they didn't like the message. I sat down and began to sob. Now, I find this next bit interesting. A prophet lady. Yeah. This is a prophet, another prophet. Yeah. Came over and said to another of these prophets. So you got yeah. They were two, watching me. Two prophets now. They're yeah. supposedly prophets. Yeah. One says, what's wrong with her? Why is she so negative? And why is she crying? Mm. Now, any prophet worth their salt mm. should know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because of the word I just delivered. Look, there's no such thing. And the bird, yeah. There's no... I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> there's no such thing as a happy prophet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't be. Yeah. If you're a prophet... You're carrying the burden of the Lord and yeah. you're carrying pain and angst and frustration and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, you're carrying God's emotions, yeah. right? Um, and, you know, the, the backbone of the prophetic message is holiness and purity. And God is grieved. When God is grieved about stuff, yeah. he'll burden a prophet with that. Yeah. So... To think that we can call ourselves a prophet and be, yay, and high five, yeah. and all, well, the whole everything is wonderful. That, sorry, that's crap. Yeah. There's no other word for that. Yeah. Um, that means you're immature or you haven't done nothing yet mm. in, in the Lord, as far as I'm concerned. Yes, we have the joy of the Lord. Yes, we can be, I'm a happy person at heart. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, when, when, when God's, when God's burdening me, there's nothing can cheer me up. Yeah. Until I've discharged that message or whatever it is. So you've got two prophets here. One says, what's wrong with her? Why is she negative? Why is she crying? Yeah. If you're a prophet, you know, you're not negative. 
Yeah. You know, you you're you're seeing the dark side of things. Yeah. Because you're geared that way, that's how God made you. Um, and the other woman says, "Oh, don't worry about her. She's always doing stuff like that." Yeah, I, yeah. So, <laughs> a figure. So, so there's two out yeah. of the half a dozen that are at the table that don't have a clue what it is to be a prophet, yeah. anyway, or they couldn't say that stuff. Yeah. And and if you're always doing stuff like that, yeah. That means you're a prophet who carries a burden mm. for something. So he said, they both glared at me. Yeah, they did. It's it disheartening. Why, well, that's why God says in the, the Old Testament to the prophet, fear not their faces. Like, yeah. Don't fear not their faces. And they went back to their, their pictures and congratulating yeah. each other on their greatness as prophets and their awesome words. And you sat sobbing, you gutted. Yeah. Because you knew nobody heard the cry. Yes. You know, yep. it's like Jeremiah. <laughs> <laughs> Not one person in the room. Nobody <laughs> <Like> heard you. <laughs> um, yeah. Not so, the audience, um, not the other prophets. Yeah. Though you were still there. Yeah. I mean, the, the Americans just lost interest in him, like, way back in oh, the yeah. dream. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, yeah nobody, I, I, I was shattered. Yeah. I was shattered. And you say this at the, at the end of the dream, so I was sobbing. Yeah. Because of their behaviour, it was wrong. Yeah. It broke my heart. So yes. they were in a wrong spirit yep. to, to the whole ethos of what the prophetic is, Yeah. Uh, which is sad. So yep. this speaks to me, uh, that table yeah. um, w was... Um, it's not always necessarily false prophets, but it's immature ones, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. The immature ones live in the shallows. Mm -hmm. um, so seriously, a true prophet, like I was talking about a whale before, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, they're not little, those tiny little fish that live in the shallow. They are like whales. Yep. They're creatures of the deep, mm -hmm. you know, and they go down on... They're, they're deep. Yeah. And then they come up when God says, go up and now spout this. <laughs> <laughs> and they come up and do this spectacular thing that, you know, yeah. and, and speak out the word of the Lord. And then, and then they go sink like a stone again mm. to the bottom of the ocean, you know, to, yeah. to, to wait for more. But, um, yeah, you cried on and off for weeks. Yes. As you would. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I think, Kimmy, that's a, that, that's a real, you know, dream from God. And I do think it pointed to, you know, the mess that is, came. Yeah. With the sickness. Yeah. And, and, and all that. Yeah. And, and yeah. like you said, you have your own prayer yeah. language. When I stood up, and I yelled out, good morning, Vietnam, which yeah. I yelled out with my eyes shut at the top of my voice three times. We, even when I said it, when I was reading it, I could feel that emotion. Yeah, you started yeah. I saw it. Welling back up in me. I'm so emotional right now. Just, yeah. just those two words, that, that little sentence. Um, I didn't see it as like, you know, we're going to world war. It was yeah. the same type of devastation as in, in and the family and the finances, the sickness, the the unpreparedness, like yeah. something that happens in the blink of an eye and nobody is ready. Yeah. Well it, it wipes out the society. Yeah. Yeah. It it was um yeah. It was. <laughs> and, and and that's what's happened. Yeah. So but the thing for you to know is because you don't really have a big platform yet. No. To speak from. And neither do I. Mm -hmm. um, it might be a bit bigger than yours, but it's... Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> you got the word. I, I get that word. So um, I guess whether or not, to whatever degree, that word reached people. Yeah. And it probably reached more people through this that we're doing today. Um it's also a preparation for you yeah. 
um, to you know pre to prepare to have more things like this yeah come on you yeah and and, and to um, follow up like you said to me earlier yeah about follow up with God yeah in, in in the dream whereas I've gone through since then this whole time yeah saying to people there's a war coming <laughs> like, yeah. I think I've even said to Zoe there's a war coming yeah. <laughs> we, we have to get ready good morning Vietnam and yeah. all that sort of yeah. thing and yeah. quite seriously but but um, as a prophet it, it, it's a good learning thing for me yeah you know and, and, and even the part where Harden up, princess, <laughs> for me. Yeah. You know, toughen up. Yeah. So they, they, they're going to reject you. They're yeah. going to do this. They're gonna, I've been praying for God to make my forehead like Flint. Like yeah. it said in, I think it's Jeremiah, yeah. where he made his forehead hard because they were going to bang against it. Well, yeah, yeah, I think I, I, I've gone through a lot of that without sort of prophesying or doing things, just with the things I've been through. So there, yeah. there's a lot in it. And I think it, it's a big thing. For the whole church to just wake up yeah. and stop being babies. So we look at um, <laughs> Ezekiel. Yep, my favourite prophet, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and um, I had an experience with Jesus when I was about eight weeks old in him, seven yep. seven weeks old. Where he literally manifested in my room. Yeah. And he told me I would be a prophet. And he, and, he, and he referenced Ezekiel, who I'd never heard of at the mm. time. And he said, Ezekiel 3.17. Anyway, I looked it up and it was there, the warning. You know, yeah. Warning from me, blah, blah, blah. So we can look at Ezekiel these days mm. and go, oh, what a champion, what a hero. But but God God had to make his forehead mm. like flint and he had to say, don't, don't fear their faces. and. Mm. You know, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, and then they'll know that there was a prophet amongst them. Yeah. So, I mean, nobody ever listened to, no. <laughs> to Ezekiel. I mean, he just couldn't get an audience. Yeah. You know, no matter. Yeah. However, um, God anointed him with that steadfastness to say it anyway. Yes. Because, you know, we st we're going to stand before, all going to stand before God one day. Mm. And now it's just for our behaviour. Mm. So I just think when God calls you to the call to rejection, isn't it wonderful? <laughs> when, when God calls you to be rejected or to a ministry that he knows yeah. people are going to reject you, he anoints you for it mm. and he graces you for it. Mm. So what we try to do is say things as graciously as possible, mm. as detailed as possible yeah remembering that we know in part we prophesy in part um but still we'll still try and get as much information as we can mm. um because people are always going to say to the warning prophets they're going to say well what is it we're supposed to do then mm. what well, well, we say well get ready prepare well what mm. how you know um so we need to if god gives specific instructions you know, you might give instructions. Yeah. Um, then we need to include those and not hold back um, anything, you know, that, that God might be saying. Mm. You know, like in, in the New Testament, they, um, I think it was Agabus or somebody prophesied a famine. Yeah. Agabus. Yeah. Uh, but they took up an offering. Yes. I mean, they believed him. Yep. And they took up an offering. Yep. And they were prepared, got yeah. prepared. <laughs> so this is where the church needs to get to. You know, what's the worst that can happen? You take up an offering and they don't need it. Well, hey, you've got a bit of money in the bank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yep. we need to, yeah, we, we, do, we do need to take these warnings seriously. And so um, was there anything else you wanted to say about any of it? No. 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 Just so that just so we need to have our hearts ready, yeah, for the future. Because there's nowhere in the Bible that it says it's going to get better. No. And and for some reason the church seems to think it's going to get better. I mean, you just got to watch yeah. YouTube and 
stuff like that and everybody's like it's going to get better well well it's already going there see there's, we get better there's so many the world isn't going to get better <laughs> there's so many camps now and so yeah. many different theologies yeah even end time stuff mm -hmm. and it, it it's actually going to get very confusing yeah because the, the devil will make sure yeah that it's very confusing yeah um so we've got to know what we believe and why yeah so why why don't um, why don't you just pray? Yeah. Um, for you know maybe people who might be watching this today. That yeah. Who have a similar. Yeah. Call to you perhaps that that God will um, prepare them. Yeah. You know and strengthen them for the days ahead to speak without fear. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you know, we'll just close we'll just close this off with that. Okay. Sound all right? Yeah, that's great. Cool. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time I've had with Lynn. Lord, I just lift up all the young, as in the spirit, warning prophets and, and, and prophets who receive the burden of the Lord, who are in large, small churches, gatherings, home groups, everywhere, Lord, and um, they've brought words. Lord, you've shown me that you've given the little ones you called them warning words and, the, and that they'd been rejected so father i pray for all these little ones that these warning prophets that you are raising up for this next season and and for the future that you would just give them a backbone of steel or just prepare their hearts for the rejection that they will go through because they will be rejected whether it be in personal prophecy or whether it will be a word lord because it's not a good time word, that they will just hang on to what God gave them, knowing that it's what God gave them, and just keep interceding for the church, that all they have to do is deliver what God gave them and pray into it, and it's, it's not their responsibility to make people believe them. Their responsibility, Lord, is to just deliver what God's given them in the way that he's given it to them, Lord. Um, and, and prepare the people. It's their business what they do with it, Lord. So just give them a backbone of steel. Help them understand what it means to be a warning prophet. Father, even pray that you bring people around these little ones that would hold them up and, and, and just teach and train them that there would be more training and equipping of a warning prophet and for the future prophets um, that they would they would understand themselves and and that they would not go into that place of rejection Lord that um father and I just pray you raise them up <laughs> you raise them up and that they would just trumpet with such boldness and such clarity Lord that the people will have to have to hear Lord and I just um yeah Lord thank you father just raise them up Lord in this, this in this time to come. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Right. Very cool. Thank you. Thanks, Kimmy. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. See ya. Bye. <laughs>